When Natalie Cassidy split from her fiancé last May, it made front-page news. Her then-fiancé, Adam Cottrell, was convicted of assaulting her and given a restraining order so he would never go near her again. Yet, despite the torment and abuse, Natalie's had a change of heart. She's publicly forgiven Adam and vowed to stand by him. Well, Natalie joins us now. Welcome. Tough one for you to do this Good morning. One. How are you feeling? Do you know, I am. I'm the most nervous I've been on here, I'd say. Really? Just because, you know, it's so... So personal to me. Well, it is a very personal thing to do, and it's a very personal thing to do in public. So why have you chosen to do it in public? Absolutely. Well, I think sometimes you sign up to things. Adam and I did a documentary when I following the birth of my baby and all of that, and people got to know us. And I think sometimes you do, you know, your OK magazine shoots, and sometimes, you know, it bites you on the bum. Mm. And sometimes you have to explain to people what's happened because they deserve an explanation. And also, as you no doubt know, if you don't tell the truth, then people write rubbish. Mm. Yeah. So I'm here really to talk about it for the last time. I want to put a line under it, mm. explain to you what's happened, how happy I am, mm. and then hopefully move on to some really good work. Well, for those people who didn't see that documentary and haven't read the magazines, how mm. did you meet? We met at the Isle of Wight Festival, mm. um, and it was a whirlwind romance. Um, we met... Uh, Funnily enough, both drinking at the time, you know, at a festival, happy-go-lucky. It was quite whirlwind, and I'd have moved in with me quite quickly. Uh, I was living in the West End at the time, and we went out, and we were partying and drinking, and, you know, just having a great time with friends. And then I was doing Strictly Come Dancing and all of that stuff, and then I fell pregnant quite, quite quickly. And um, suddenly, I, I didn't really like Adam when he'd had a drink. I was is that when it changed? It didn't change. Oh, right as soon as you fell pregnant? No, I, I, Adam and drink didn't mix, really, from the beginning. But whilst I was drinking, I'm not great when I have a drink, mm. to be honest. I don't think anyone is. But, yeah, it did change and, and it got worse because I was permanently on edge. So when Adam were to have one drink, everyone else would be like, what's the matter with you? He's fine. And I'd be like... He's had a drink, I don't like it, I don't like it. So I put pressure on him, yeah. then he'd have another drink, and, and so on and so forth. How does he feel about you being here today? And, today, and, yeah. I think it's quite hard for him. You know, it's hard for everybody who's close to me, you know, family. You know, I've done all of this in, in my private way. Yeah. I've done it with my dad and explained to my dad, and I've, you know, my brother, and, you know, all that sort of thing. Yeah. So it's hard. But well, it's got to be said, really. I, I, I'm here to... I can only go by my story. You know, you're a great Twitter fan and people on Twitter over the weekend have been saying to me, you know, great support, lovely, lovely people supporting me. Other people saying, you're mad, mm. he's going to do it again, he's going to, you know... Well, you said there are many people who have partners who they don't really like quite as much when they've had uh, a drink. Absolutely. Um, but there is, a, there is a line that gets crossed mm -hmm. uh, when it becomes an abuse of some abuse. sort, whether it is mental or physical Absolutely. abuse. When did you notice that that line had been crossed? Well, because the arguments weren't only verbal anymore, they became, uh, in a way, physical. You know, it's been reported that, you know, in a, in a, in a verbal argument, Adam decided, you know, uh, to pick a slipper up and, and strike me with it. Mm. It's not, it, you know, you cannot condone that behaviour. The mm. biggest thing for me is that I'm a very strong person. So, as soon as these things began to happen, and really it was that, and then the smearing of mascara, and right. for me that was complete humiliation, rather yes. than violence. Yeah. You are a, a strong person, yeah. so why do you think you stayed after the first couple of times it happened? Because, because I think it takes a while, you feel embarrassed, you want to change someone yourself, you think, oh, it'll be all right, we'll sort this out. Um, you don't want to tell your family members how you feel straight away. But I was very good, you know, as soon as it started to happen, I opened up to friends, I opened up to family, and you realise this can't go on. Yeah. And I was strong enough to, to, you know, get a restraining order on Adam, which is very, very hard to do to the father of your child. Well, he was, uh, he was arrested in, in May yes. um, and admitted to two assaults, mm -hmm. given 120 hours of community service, issued that restraining order. Yeah. Um, you called off the engagement. Yes. Um, and, um, and many people would say that, as, as you just hinted at then, that that is the point to say, right, I'm, get out, get out it's as exactly fast as I you did. can. It's exactly <laughs> what I did. I completely said, I want to restrain the order, I don't want to see him anymore, I don't want to talk to him anymore. I was so angry, you know, I hated what he'd done. 
I, I kind of, I always said I hated him, but I didn't really hate him. Mm. But you make yourself believe. Yeah. You know, don't want to love it that person anymore. Kind of makes it easier for. It's easier, you know. For you. I think it's the same as anything. You don't see that thing, or you don't talk to that person. It makes it easier to forget. So I kind of moved on and tried to just have a lovely summer with my daughter and family and friends have been amazing, as you can imagine, just incredible support. Um, and. So how, why, what, what were the circumstances that led you up to, to trying this. again and being here? It's quite, it's quite unbelievable, really, because Adam was seeing Eliza, not through me. Your but, daughter. But my, our, our daughter. Yeah. Um, and that was going very well. And, and we decided, I decided, you know, I think I'm going to drop the restraining order because it's easier for us to be in touch, to talk yeah. and all of that. And, um, and it was going very well, uh, completely amicable. And, um, and I realised that I loved him and I missed him and all of that kind of thing. And then something awful happened. And Adam was absolutely fine on a Friday and on Saturday he disappeared. And uh, not that he was living with me, but you know, we'd seen each other through Eliza and he disappeared. And I sat, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of women know what I'm talking about, sat and thought, okay, 12 hours go by, phone switched off, where is he? What's he doing? Mm. He's drunk, obviously. Um, I think that's the thing as well, isn't it? When you're, you, you're in a relationship or have had a relationship mm. with somebody that drinks, it's the constant worry constant about worry. when they disappear, what has happened. Even if they go out the door, you're thinking, mm. uh, what time are they going to come back? Well, he was found some 36 hours later, wasn't it, in a garden. He'd been drunk in an old lady's garden awful. and caused some damage. And, awful, awful, And so that, awful. that is, uh, once again, you know, someone who has been... And you say that he was getting... The, the relationship with, with your daughter was terrific. Mm. Um, and then that is a relapse, a frightening relapse. It, it shows was a frightening that it's still relapse. there. I, I must say, before that, he was doing the, I'm not going to drink on his own. He'd not gone to any programme mm. or he'd not got any help and he, he thought he could do it on his own. And he can't do it on his own. And after that incident, he phoned me and I actually think he thought I was going to say, what are you ringing me for? Finished. Goodbye. Not having it. But something turned in my brain and I thought, actually, he's not a horrible person. He's not well. Mm. He's not well, actually. So and, you sought help? Um, and he got some help, yeah. and I was there as a friend. And we just became stronger and stronger, and I thought, you know what, that we can beat this together. And the things that happened to me, the violence and the mental stuff that happened last year, although terrible, I was never beaten up black and blue. They were mm. terrible things. The you thing, were hit with a slipper. Oh, absolutely. That's what I'm saying. I'd never condone it, and it's awful. Yeah. However, the biggest thing for me was the alcohol and the complete panic and being on edge and wondering when Adam was going to get moody after one drink or do whatever. And without that in our lives, I cannot express our life is amazing. We went to the farm yesterday. And we is he a totally, dinner. totally different person? He's a totally different person because the programme he's doing, it's not only about alcohol, you know, it's about alcoholics. He's, you know, he says he's an alcoholic now. They have a lot of issues. And alcohol doesn't help those issues. The programme is on is now, adjust, you know, addressing every issue. Do so, you worry though? And I don't want to be negative here no, because you're course. in a very You've positive a... place. No, absolutely. Um, uh, but I mean, the refuge, yes. uh, the, uh, the, the, the abuse charity. Yes. They say statistically, domestic abuse is likely to get worse over time. Mm. It's possible for someone to, to change, but it's the least likely scenario. Abuse can take many forms: emotional, sexual, financial. There's no such thing as low risk domestic violence. All of the no, things that we know. Alcohol doesn't cause domestic abuse, but it's used as an excuse for it. Using alcohol takes responsibility away from the perpetrator. Mm. Um, if someone takes a partner back following domestic abuse, it's important they have a support plan in place and a safe <coughs> escape plan. Mm. That's, the, that's the advice from Refuge. Absolutely. And that's advice for you know, anyone yeah, who is totally. suffering um, the, the way you've, you've suffered. I, what I would say to that, Philip, I think the biggest thing I'd say is I can only talk about my story. Um, in my house, in our home, what goes on. And when it was to do with drinking, you know, it was. And now I can, I wouldn't be here today. Mm. It's going to take a long time. I don't really want to be sitting here talking about it, really. Sure, of course. I really don't. It's not really... But what you say is that you want to look back in 10 or 15 years' time to and say to Eliza... I'd like to say... This is what we did. This is what we've done. This, you know, and, and it's every day. It's very hard because you always want to look... Ten, five years down the line, but we're Do taking you think you'll it every day. Always be cautious and have a defence mechanism in place for if anything were to happen again. If, of course, but I think if I was thinking now, 
of what was going to happen, yes. and it, then I wouldn't be doing what yeah. I was doing. But I'm you not must thinking be thinking, this is, your, this is your last chance. Yeah. Or we'll get through if you relapse. We'll try again. Yeah, what I mean, is, what's your breaking? I've got yeah. to be honest. I've got to, yeah. I was thinking about this yesterday because I knew it might come up. And really, if I'm honest, I think if the violence, if if anything violent were to happen again, it would absolutely be it, because you know you can't keep saying, oh well, you know, yeah. someone's not well. Well, yeah, you, you can't do that. If Adam were to go out and have a drink again, I would have to address it. I could turn around and say, I can't cope with this anymore. Goodbye. Or I could say, all right, you've had a relapse, let's start again. Mm. But I haven't got a crystal ball. I don't know what's going to happen. And but I know 100% that if it carries on and if Adam continues to do what he's doing, I really do believe that we're going to be really happy. And it's as I say, you have to take one day at a time. One day at a time, yeah. all the time. Mm. Mm. Well, I wish you, all three of you, um, Thank uh, you. The, uh, the, the, the best of luck and hope that, as you say, you know, this is just by your perseverance and getting help and speaking yeah. to the right people and addressing it and him addressing it yeah. that those are all the things that are in in, in place for the foundation to, to make it better it is. i hope so um thank you thanks today. no that i had to come it? on and draw a line under it because yeah. i want to get on and you know so do all the it. exciting yeah, stuff it. it's done yeah it's all all over thank you thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Uh, if you've been affected by anything that we have just been talking about, see the website itv.com forward slash this morning for details of helplines. And now it's over to Colleen in the hub.